Hello. Hello, Tabash. <laughs> We're on the air. Be careful what you say. <laughs> <laughs> it's always wonderful to spend time with you. It's interesting looking at your cellular structure. Since we first met, you've actually uh, moved into um, a complete different frequency. So I don't know if I've told you that if you take, say, this stone as a cell, and around your cell, cells of your body is, is a, a ball of light, basically. And, and that's God's energy. And it's the same for every cell in your body. And so when you are attuning to a higher level of consciousness, what happens is that those energy balls, they spin around the cellular structure. And as they spin, it, it, they create a, a, a pulsing energy that goes like this. And as they go like this, and what happens if all the cells are doing that, then they actually expand out and they reach to each other. And it creates this greater sense of well-being within your system. And if you think about how it can work in, in the opposite way, that when people are so caught up into the density of human nature, then the light energy around the cell is still there, but it basically shrinks. And then what it does, it's stagnant. It just doesn't move. And this is how um, cells are uh, create diseases, because they're feeding into the, the, the God's energy, basically. So when you look at someone like yourself and other people who are raising their um, electromagnetic vibrations, then of course your, for want of a better phrase, your your balls of light are going ballistic. <laughs> <laughs> this gracious, great balls of fire. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. So well done, well done. Thank you, Tabash. You know, I wanted folks to get a sense of what we were going to be doing uh, as we're together in Sedona coming up very soon here in June. And a thought occurred to me, what is it about Sedona that's so interesting? And uh, the vibration there is, it seems to be unique. If you think about the whole planet, the whole planet is, of course, a living being of consciousness. And so, you know, right through the whole planet, you have, um, we'll call them in the way the physiological system is, you have the main arteries, which carry the blood and all that stuff. So the earth itself has main arteries as well. And, and those main arteries is what people have understood as the lines of the earth or the ley lines. And of course, you know, what happens is that you have certain areas where those ley, ley lines um, pass and, and, and connect. And basically what these are, are, are like earth chakras so like you have chakras in your physical body, so what you do is the planet itself has chakras, and of course, you know, it, it's um, unlimited in its number. And of course, you know, in certain areas on the planet, it's been a greater, denser mass of God's consciousness. And so, Arizona, although actually quite a lot of Arizona itself, is one of those areas. And so there's a more um, um, higher vibration in, in certain areas. And so when that vibration is there, then of course, you know, it permeates through the land itself. And, and so people get drawn towards specific vibrations, specific areas. And, you know, it's interesting if you look at ancient history where a lot of the original settlements were, and, and these were actually places where there are high vibrational frequencies. So high intensity of God's energy, um, you know, allowed uh, people to experience a greater sense of well-being, a greater sense of harmony, and, of course, a greater sense of uh, companionship um, on all levels of mind, body, and spirit. And, of course, what happens is that because the energy lines are always shifting and changing based on the collective energy of what's going on outside the Earth, that can actually have a huge effect on um, the frequency of that particular place. Now, of course, the greater change of vibration that's happening on the planet at the moment, then these uh, higher energy places, some of them are actually increasing in their vibration, and Sedona is one of those places. And, and in other places, frequency anymore. 
Therefore, there might be a history in that particular place, but it's not so alive. And I'll just cite um, the area in England called Stonehenge. And so Stonehenge was a high vibrational frequency place at one point, but now it's not. And, and so, and it's just the natural shift of, of, of vibration and energy. As the earth itself shifts, it wakes up. And so Sedona is waking up, and, and that's why it's a good place to go and, you know, just give yourself a good blast if you want to put it that way. <laughs> yes, well, while we're in Sedona on Friday, June 27th, and Saturday, June 28th, I just wanted folks to kind of get a sense of um, what you might be sharing with them and what they can expect as um, sort of a teaser, possibly, into what's going to be uh, given at this particular event? Yeah, um, I think that for a start, because of the necessity to lift consciousness on this planet is very, very strong, then, you know, it's good to grab an opportunity to uh, be conscious of source power, to participate on a conscious level of source power, and I think also, too, when people get drawn into events like I'm going to present, then it's also an opportunity to promote through your own physical systems, mental systems, etc., um, a vibration that raises your own level of awareness, but also promotes through your system um, what I'm going to call a sense of release from a lot of the old vibrations and energies. And so when people congregate on mass meetings and things, um, they're actually assisting each other in finding a new balance. But also, too, you know, many, many people, they've often asked me the question, you know, what is it I can do to make a difference on the planet? And, and so thinking that they've got to go out there and become some great spiritual therapist or, or save the world in some way. Whereas often it's just participate in events where like-minded people are blending their vibrations together, therefore allowing the energy to raise itself, and that energy goes out into, into the planet as much as around the planet, and therefore that adds to uh, promotion of the well-being of all things. So on the Friday, uh, my aim is to first and foremost establish the energy for that weekend that we will be working. And so I'm going to do some general teaching for a while, but then I'd like to take the participants through uh, a meditation where we're going to attune into uh, what I'm going to call all the vibrations of indigenous energies on this planet. Now, if you think about the tribes that are through this planet, in the ancient days, certain tribes each possessed a certain key to source power. And, and in those days, the tribes, they had a, a great uh, companionship, a great harmony between them. And so each was an essential link to the well-being of the planet because the power that each tribe had, it's a bit like, well, they've got the key for that particular situation, but no one key could open up all the power. And so what it did in ancient times is that it pretty much gave people this understanding about collective power and how it needed to work. So it actually brought people together. So if you give, as you look on, on this planet, if you give one person the power, then look what they end up doing with it. Whereas if you distribute the power to certain places, so they're responsible for that particular vibration, then the only way that you can know the absolute power is to get together. And, and so, so when I do this meditation, it's about pulling together all those keys so that therefore everyone is aware that they have this ability to be source power but the only way to do it is to get together and, and, and understand the necessity of, you know, being in harmony with each other and, and working with God's power uh, to promote, you know, the greatest vibrations, the greatest energy on this planet at this particular point. And what I tend to like to do is I really love the use of music in regards to the situation and some of the music that we're going to use in this particular meditation is uh, a beautiful um, piece of music which has been put together by um, a Maori man here in New Zealand. 
and and it's the most amazing Mardi chants and and beautiful sounds and, and vibrations, which is very ethereal, uh, very cosmic, and and will touch people's souls and take them, you know, into places they have never been before. <laughs> On the set, I'm going to structure it. I'm going to talk a lot about obviously what's going on on, on this planet at this point and the way that people have to rearrange things so that therefore there's more balance and more harmony. And through that day, I'll give people plenty of opportunity to ask questions about you know, themselves if they wish, but, but also what's going on in this planet and the roles that everyone can actually play to, to bring about this, this greater energy, this greater frequency. So. And again, I think I will probably use some more meditation during that time as well, just to allow people to move into, let's call it the non-physical aspects of themselves, so that therefore they're able to gather information. I like to call it cosmic shopping. So we're going to go cosmic shopping on the Saturday. <laughs> and, and you don't have to bring your credit card. <laughs> it's all free. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Oh, there's a Macy's department store out in Spur. <laughs> it's one you've never known before. <laughs> Interesting. Well, I thought I was excited before, but now I'm really getting excited to experience what you're going to share with us. And, and the fact that we all kind of add our own energy to this is very, very exciting. I'm, I'm extremely excited about that. And I also um, am... Any thing that we can do in this day and age now, especially going through these profound changes that we're all going through, anything we can do to make sense of it, to get some sense of ground, uh, to gain some sense of security, to gain some sense of uh, enlightenment in all of this, to gain some sense of uh, power, personal power. Yeah. But, you know... The word that you used just then is very relevant. Uh, it is a profound time in life because humans are understanding their authenticity. And in that sense, they are naturally seeking for something more. And, and a lot of humans aren't able to interpret what that something more is simply through the, the logic and through science and through um, the day-to-day -day life. And that's why it's so important to feed that uh, authentic part of you. And when you do, then it's like you've opened that door and a lot of people, as you yourself understand, it's like, oh, of course. How, how simple could that be? And, and, and when you get to that point, I think the Greeks called it your eureka moment. I see the light. And so having seen that light, then it really comes down to the way that you need to arrange that light at this particular point in, in, in your, the proceedings of your own personal lives, but also the collective energy. And, and, you know, life is full of cycles all the time. So, you know, most human beings have reached the, the cycle of their God nature now. And so every human being, whether they understand it or, or even know it, are actually walking towards that idea. And as they walk closer to the concept of it, then you get the feelings of it, you get the ideas of it, you get the sensations of needing to do something, needing to find something, needing to experience something. And then when you look around, listen to the way the world is speaking to you. It becomes very easy when you realize, oh, yeah, I can see what I need to do here. And, and whether it's through people that you make links with or whether it's something you may read or something that you may experience on a walk. But whatever it is, you realize that, for want of a better phrase, God's speaking to everybody at this particular point and, and, and saying, right, well, um, here's some power, here's life. Now, this is what needs to be done now. And, and in the past, when those sorts of messages were given, people needed probably a great deal more guidance in regards to how to use this energy. Because in those ancient days, some of the people weren't as intellectual or sophisticated in their understanding of things. Whereas now, it's different because people are more intellectual and people are more sophisticated in their understanding of how source power works. So therefore, rather than always seek for guidance, what they're realizing is that um, the power is there and the power has been directed to them. But then what's happened is that they've woken up within themselves and they know what they need to do with it. 
and 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 that's why people just feel impelled to make music or to write that book or to you know go to that meeting or or, or present that meeting, and and so it's such a a time of honesty, and 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 a time of really hearing who you are, and it's not a time of working it out. It's a time of uh, taking what you are and and translating that into your successes, physically, mentally, spiritually, in, in all levels of your life, as you yourself have, have discovered. And as you've discovered also what you've done, and many other listeners, is that having done this, you've established an even greater launching pad for, for, for more. And, and a good analogy would be, you know, if you have a satellite on Earth putting signals out, it's the, the, the universe, but then you take that same satellite and you take it somewhere out in the universe and, and then you project signals out from that point. So, so you're going to get a better result, so to speak. So if you think about it from a human point of consciousness, you know, your, your soul has been like this satellite on Earth and it's projecting this energy. But now what's happening is that you projected yourself, you're launching yourself from a higher space of consciousness, which means that you're able to receive greater signals because you're actually out there more than you're here. And, and that makes a huge difference to uh, what you're able to receive, understand, but also what it does, it makes a huge difference to your physiological system. And that's why, you know, and I'll stress this, that it's a very important time of preparation on this planet on all levels, and particularly for your physiological system, because you're all preparing your bodies for being able to receive that higher vibration. And if that body, you know, isn't, isn't prepared for that, well, then, you know, it gets into a disturbance. And remember, you've got that small part of your soul in your body and the rest of your soul is non-physical. Someone once said to me, Tabash, you know, what would it feel like if all of your soul was in your body? And, and, and I said, well, that's not going to happen because if that was happened, the body would blow up. And, and, and that, that's not a good look. And, and, and so because it's just some power and energy, it can't be consolidated into the physiological system. But what can happen is that the physiological system is able to adjust itself to a, a higher degree of vibration, which in the terms that you humans would use would be superhuman. So, you know, and I, I just think about when that man who created the character Superman, and, and, and it's interesting, you know, that wasn't a mythological creature that came out of his brain. That was real. And that's a sort of reminder to you that, oh, this is how it used to be. So these are these sort of little subliminal messages that come through history. When you look at all these characters that are being created and, and the way that people in their minds have the idea about wanting to be superhuman, wanting to fly through the universe, you know, all that type of thing, that, that can happen. But, but of course, you've got to have enough human beings who are on the right page for all that to, to be accepted. And of course, there's still that division between, you know, those who believe and those who don't believe. And then you have the other division about those who want to control and those who want to be controlled. So as long as you've got factions like that happening, then it just is a conflict of interest of energy. And so this is a time where the conflict of energy is becoming less. So there's becoming more of a blend and therefore more harmony and more harmony allows the alignment of that superhuman energy to flow onto the, 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 the planet itself and therefore be translated into paradise, as you people have said. So, so you're in a way creating your, new, your next Eden. I like, to, I like to think of ourselves as major button pushers. And, and, you know, but the thing is also is that that comes about because that's what people want. So, so you attract towards you another key that opens something up for you. But then I think I will also remind people that whoever you gather into your life that opens up that door for you, don't look upon that as the answer. Look upon that as the key that opens up that door. And to remind you that when you open that, that door, what do you usually find? Yourself. And then you suddenly realize that here's the answer. And it's always going to be that. But of course, human nature has a propensity to think that in human nature terms. But when you open up that door, your aim is to see your own soul. And when you see your own soul, then you realize there's the answer. It's in my soul. And, and, and again, what could be simpler, but also what could be quite hard for some people? Because it's not that people are afraid of their soul, but they get so caught up 
into their human nature that they feel that by disclosing their soul, then somehow it's going to stop them from living. And, and then, of course, the thing is, it's going to make their life even greater. But such is the journey on Earth. You know, I wanted folks to know that you were the one who named our event the Light Refreshments with Tavash. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also, you've been working on a book with Blair, and I'm very excited to not only read it, but is there something you'd like to share about that right yeah. now? Yeah, it's called Don't Change the Channel. <laughs> and um, it's been a, a work in progress over the last four years. And it's now culminated to um, it being published. And so, you know, it's always exciting when you can get your message out in a greater way, in a bigger way. And I think that, you know, when I've said that, I've thought what I've said to you in the past, your message to the world is simply your life. Yes, I love that. So if you are resonating to the highest vibration always, then you're actually doing your job. And then, of course, it makes sense to think that you're going to take what you become and want to do good with it, want to do more with it. And, and that's how other people benefit from it, we, be it from words you speak or things you, you present or the music you create. You know, so it's always about, right, how can I take this and translate this into some form of healing, some form of key, some form of reminder to people that, as they say, but wait, there's more. <laughs> Is that what they say on your TV commercials over there? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it certainly is. Well, my heart is exploding with appreciation for you, Tabash. And I'm very excited for the folks that are drawn to be with us. Is there any type of preparation you, that you would recommend that they can do? I think that on some level they've already done their preparation. That's why they're drawn towards it in the first place. Yes. And I think that, and the way I like to look upon it, sometimes the less preparation you do, the more you'll actually receive. Yes. And, and I think it's about coming let's call it, with an open soul. And as you come with an open soul, um, leave your human nature behind. Come as God, participate as God, share as God, and love as God. Well, thank you so much, Tabash, for doing this with me and sharing your insights. Mm -hmm. And uh, very excited yes. to be with you. Well, I look forward to seeing you and seeing you all in Sedona. And come and enjoy some really good high vibes. And also remember, well, my last word on that would be, imagine that you are all little vortexes yourself. So as you bring your own vortice with you, then just imagine the collective vibration that you're going to create by sharing this with other vibrations and people. So God bless you all with love. Nice. Thank you, Thank you so much, Tabash. That was very satisfying.